All right, here's a quick description of even and odd functions. All right, to describe these two concepts, I generally find that there are really two ways to explain it. There's an algebraic way of explaining it and a geometric way of explaining it. So the algebraic description is this. Given a function f, for every x in the domain of f, you have f of negative x equals f of x. So basically what this means is this. If negative 3, 4 is a point on the graph, that means that 3, 4 has to be as well. And this has to be true for every single x value that you can use for the function f. Now for the geometric description, we'll use the previous example. So if negative 3, 4, which we'll say is about here, is on the graph, that means that 3, 4 has to be as well. Now if you notice, look at that, those are symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So that basically means that every even function is symmetric about the y-axis. So it would have to look like, you know, maybe a parabola or something like that. Just something that has symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So again, with odd functions, we'll take the same approach. We're going to use an algebraic and a geometric way to explain what's happening. We have, for every x in the domain of some function f, that f of negative x equals the opposite of f of x. So basically, this is what's happening for every single point. If you have negative 2, 5 on the graph of some function f, then in an odd function, the point 2, negative 5 would be on there as well. So again, if we put these two points on the coordinate plane and we look at what's happening here um, using a, a geometric explanation, here's the origin. These two points are exactly the same distance away from the origin. And that's going to be true for every pair of points that we can match up in this way. And what ends up happening is, is you get um, you get a symmetry with respect to the origin, which is you know usually some sort of cubic function, or even um, it could be a, a tangent type function, um, but just something that exhibits um, symmetry with respect to the origin. All right, so let's try some examples. So let's determine if the function that's being shown is either even, odd, or neither. So here's the function f. And so this one, again, you can see it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And so this is an example of an even function. Here's another function that I've called g. And so the function g has this green graph as shown here. So maybe at first glance you would think, well, it's sort of a cubic looking function, maybe it's an odd function. But the test is, is that, again, if, if you took a point here, let's, let's just pretend that this point is at 1, 5. You know, you ought to be able to find negative 1, negative 5 on there. And, you know, if I do that, it's not on the graph. All right, so again, is there symmetry with respect to the origin? And the answer is not for every point, no. So this one's actually neither. All right, finally, we have the function h of x equals x. So essentially, just, you know, the graph of the line y equals x. So I'm going to start this one with an algebraic approach, just so you can see one that has that. So the question is, is what does f of negative x equal? Well, it of course equals negative x. And since x is h of x, this is equal to negative h of x. And I sort of ninja corrected the name of my function there. So again, h of negative x is equal to negative h of x. So this is an odd function. I think you'll like the geometric approach a little bit better. Here's the graph y equals x. Again, is it symmetric with respect to the origin? If I pick any point on there, let's say the point 2, 2, you know, if I put in negative 2, will I get negative 2? And the answer is yes. Those are, again, symmetric with respect to the origin. So again, that is another way to prove that it is an odd function. 